Okay, so let's look at this one. There are several, several different ways of doing this problem. Um, because the exponent is only a square, you might be tempted to actually foil this out, distribute it, and then use the quotient rule. I'm not gonna lie, that might be the easier um, path for you. I really don't care how you wanna do it. Um, but the way that the book does this, because it's certainly in the chain rule section, is, is they want you to use the chain rule. So what's the chain rule? The chain rule says, if we're looking at 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3 quantity squared, it says to find the derivative, what you do is you drop the power, keep the inside thing same, power minus 1, derivative of the inside. So let's do that. Drop the power would be a 2. Keep the inside the same, so that would be 3x minus 1 all over x squared plus 3 to the power minus 1, so that would be um, to the first power. But then you need to do the derivative of the inside. So we need to do 3x minus 1 all over x squared plus 3, the derivative of that. So I'm going to do that as a side problem over here. Let's look at the derivative on the side. Let's look at the derivative with respect to x of 3x minus 1 all over x squared plus 3. And I hope you've done the quotient rule enough times now that you don't need to do that side work of low, d low, high, d high, show it plugging it in, and you can really just go right into it. If you still want to do that side work, I, I highly encourage it. Um, so here's the quotient rule says it's the low, which would be x squared plus 3 times the derivative of the high. Well, the derivative of 3x minus 1 is a 3, minus the high, which is 3x minus 1, times the derivative of the low, the derivative of x squared plus 3 is 2x, all over the low function, which is x squared plus 3, quantity squared. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to distribute out the 3 to the first one. That would give me a 3x squared, and then 3 times 3 is a 9. I'm going to distribute the negative and the 2x into both of these. So negative 2x times 3x would be a minus 6x and a negative 2x times a negative 1 would be a positive, sorry, that's minus 6x squared, and then it would be a positive 2x. All of this is over x squared plus 3 quantity squared. Let's simplify that. When we simplify that, 3x squared minus 6x squared would be a negative 3x squared. Then we'd have a plus 2x and a plus a 9. And all of that's over x squared plus 3 quantity squared. Why did I do all of that work? Because I had to use the quotient rule to find the derivative of the inside. And I still need to plug that in to the derivative up here. So let's go back to our main derivative. Our main derivative. Sorry, that should be a y prime. So y prime should equal 2 times 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3 times that stuff that we just got, which was a minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 9. And then all of that was over x squared plus 3 quantity squared. So the only thing we can do here is look to see if we can simplify. I do see that we have common factors on bottom, an x squared plus 3 and an x squared plus 3 squared. So that would be x squared plus 3 cubed. Other than that, I don't really see much we can do. No simplification. So I have a 2 on top. I have a 3x minus 1 on top. And I have a minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 9 on top. And then on bottom, I would just have x squared plus 3 quantity cubed. So that's combining everything. So that's my final answer. I'll write it in the final answer blank now. 2 times 3, the x minus 1, the quantity 3x minus 1, times the quantity negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9, close it, all over x squared plus 3 quantity cubed. Make sure you can see that's a cube. Okay. All right. So we've moved on now from the chain rule. As you can see, the chain rule just like lets us take derivatives of nastier functions. The chain rule truly, truly isn't bad. It's drop the power, keep the inside to the power minus 1, multiply times the derivative of the inside. It truly, truly, truly is not bad. The problem is 
is in the textbook, they don't just do the chain rule. They do the chain rule inside of a product rule, inside of a quotient rule, and they combine all the different rules together. So really what it comes down to is each individual part of a problem should not be too difficult. But overall, if you don't do your bookkeeping, if you don't show every step and you're not extremely clear with your work, you can easily, easily make an error in your mathematics and get the problem completely wrong. Okay, so let's move on to the transcendental functions. What do we do for the transcendental functions uh, in the chain rule? Um, it's pretty much the exact same thing. You just take the derivative like you knew it, and then you just multiply it times u prime. So the derivative of sine of u is cosine of u, but then you do the u prime. What I want you to notice is this is the derivative with respect to x, and the variable on the inside is a u, so your variables don't match. Anytime your variables don't match, you have to add that u prime or whatever it is on the inside, right? They do it every single time. So again, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, but then you need to multiply it times u, u prime. Derivative of secant is secant tangent, multiply it times u prime. Derivative of e to the u, copy paste, e to the u, but remember to multiply times u prime. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, remember to multiply it by u prime. Cotangent, derivative of that is negative cosecant squared, Remember to multiply by u prime. Cosecant is negative, co derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Remember to multiply by u prime. So that is all your transcendental functions, the six trig functions, and um, your exponential function. The only one that's missing is your logarithmic function, and we're going to do that shortly. Okay, so let's look at the first one. It says, how would you find the derivative of y equals sine of 2x? Well, it's going to be y prime is going to be the exact same it was. The derivative of sine is cosine. So it's cosine of 2x. But then we have to remember to multiply times the derivative of 2x. The derivative of 2x is 2. And I want to make sure you understand that the 2 belongs out in front. So this is 2 cosine of 2x. 2 cosine of 2x. OK. How about the derivative of cosine of x minus 1? Well, the derivative of cosine of u is equal to sine of u. So it's sine of, keep the inside the same. But always remember to multiply times the derivative of the inside. And sorry, it's not sine. It's negative sine, right? The derivative of cosine is negative sine. We still need to multiply times the derivative of the inside. But that's nice, because the derivative of x minus 1 is simply 1. So y prime would equal negative sine of x minus 1. Put that in the answer blank. 